No. No. Hmm. This one's very good. I don't know. There's just too many decisions. Oh. Hello. My name is Alexander Pino, and this is my wine talk. Today we're going to be having a lovely talk about movies. You see, I love watching movies. Give me a bottle of Chardonnay, some buttered popcorn, and I'll sit on my couch and I'll watch me a rom-com or any other kind of movie. I love all sorts of movies. Oh, there are three types of movies that I have a certain hatred for. The cliffhangers, the excessive sequels, and the drunken scripts. But first we're going to be talking about the cliffhangers. Now, cliffhangers aren't all that bad. However, you see, there are certain situations where you get a cliffhanger on your favorite show, your favorite movie. But what really irks me is whenever I have seen many movies and TV shows where they have this life-changing cliffhanger. And guess what? Then it gets cancelled. They don't add a sequel. They don't do anything. I am left to curl up in the field position wondering what could have been. Unresolved cliffhangers are like a successful surgery. They pull the blade out. They stitch you up. Make sure your wound isn't perfectly healed. Even put some alcohol on it. And then they jam it right back in there and twist it. That's what an unresolved cliffhanger is like. Why should I have to suffer because you failed to write a successful script or manage your budget correctly? Besides the cliffhangers, my second least favorite is the excessive sequels. And boy, do I have the example for you. You see, I love a sequel just as much as any other person. But once we got to Fast and Furious 4, did we really need to make five more? Were five more sequels really necessary? I don't think so. How many damn movies can we make about the same Fast and Furious drivers? Vin Diesel is a great actor. Do not get me wrong. It was a body. But is he really worth nine sequels? I don't believe so. I barely think that any actor is worth three sequels, much less nine. There is such a thing as overdoing it. Moving on. My least favorite type of movie are the drunken scripts. Drunken scripts are the ones that are the most terrible and have the most plot holes, but however, they are the most comedic, and they make me laugh a lot, especially when I'm super, super hammered. You get me three bottles of Chardonnay, oh, do I love me a drunken script. Some drunken script examples are The Wolf Cop and Sharknado, and there's many more many more examples I could give. Drunken scripts of those really bad movies that are like a, a fever dream that sound like a belligerent drunk man wrote them at 5 a.m. during one of his binge drinking sessions. Every plot hole results in a comedic effect which is the only positive about these movies. I am all for drinking but at least write a coherent and legible plot so I can at least sit my wine in peace instead of having to do a double take at every turn. You'd think these directors don't know how to make a damn good movie. Anywho, that's all for today's wine talk, but I hope you enjoyed watching today about my brutal, honest opinions about movies. And if you did, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, okay? And remember, the world is your cup of wine. Sip on the truth. Stay alive.